I'm a business improvement specialist for the City of Ballarat and this is my presentation for Global Con 1. Collaboration, what a waste. So the situation, the City of Ballarat could no longer have, the City of Ballarat no longer had a vendor that could accept glass as a recyclable material. So the problem, glass was no longer allowed in recycling. In the old days, we got everyone to put all of their glass in our yellow lid recycle bins. This was fantastic because the glass could be recycled multiple times, reused for lots of different purposes. Unfortunately, we no longer had a vendor that could take that glass. So now we had to figure out what to do with it. In the city of Ballarat, we have three bins. We have a green waste bin for lawn clippings and leaves and branches. We have our landfill bin, which goes straight to landfill. Um, that's your general rubbish from your house. Yeah. And then you have your recycle bin. So that's plastics, um, any recyclable materials, including glass. So now we have to figure out where to put the glass. We were also under extreme time pressure. We were notified kind of late of this development and when my team got involved we had around about two weeks to help design a solution and come up with a good way to approach this problem. There was currently no solution actually decided upon so there were lots of thoughts and theories but nothing had actually been settled. There was also a lack of communication between the teams and that's not because they didn't like each other it's just they weren't in constant communication they were different departments in different areas so that wasn't sort of their primary focus so normally in this instance i would design a co-location effort so things like a war room you put a war room together and you get everyone together you can have all of your information up on the wall so everyone can see it. You can have screens, you can have pictures, you can have flowcharts and, and metrics, and it's all there available. Everyone gets together and works on the, on the problem. Unfortunately, we didn't have that ability. We were confined to our geographical locations, and they were the customer service, Business Improvement and Marketing and Comms teams were all located in our Town Hall. And our depot staff and our curbside advisors were out at our depot. So you're looking right across the other side of town. So co-location was not an option. But sharing was essential. The proposal that was brought to me was eight recycling advisors that would go and inspect bins. They would determine the level of contamination. They would record the contamination on notepads. They would then bring those back and an admin team would enter the data into a database. They would also have tags to go on bins to, to leave some education material for, for people for, for the future. The idea was to run this pilot for two months and have a look at the data when we were finished and see whether we were successful, whether that campaign was successful, and then make a decision from there. But continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. I, I find this quote really resonates with me uh, from a career in all different sort of things from manufacturing to IT to telco and now in local government I find that just do something do anything just keep moving forward and that momentum gets you moving so that's what we did we decided to get moving so I put my Lean Six Sigma hat on and I said well what's the problem and we ran through the who what when where why and how of the problem 
we did root cause analysis, we did uh, five whys techniques, we did process mapping after process mapping after process mapping, looking at lots of potential future states. We really wanted to make this thing work, but there were so many variables around uh, the way the bins were picked up, when the trucks were going to run and how our advisors would interact with the trucks. We didn't want to be too early or too late. We needed to understand what the makeup of the bins were. You can see a little picture there of a bin. We were trying to understand capacity. Does, uh, does a bin full of plastic weigh the same as a bin full of glass? And so the solution that was presented. We were going to use Teams for collaboration. Now the Teams and the, the Microsoft ecosystem has been rolling out in Ballarat for a little while, but it hasn't reached all of the edges. So probably around about half of the people that were involved in this campaign were not using Teams. Some of them were use, still using Skype for business, and some of them were not using Skype or any other kind of chat. It was all phone calls and emails. So this presented a little bit of a challenge or an opportunity to upskill and educate. We were going to use Power Apps for data capture. Uh, I, 12 months ago, I'd never heard of Power Apps. Six months ago, I had only just built out-of-the-box apps. So it really was a, a bit of a Hail Mary, but the amazing community and a lot of Googling and late nights sort of got us across the line. SharePoint for data storage. At first, when I, I started using SharePoint lists, I thought, oh, this is, this is great. It's kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. Understanding the true power of SharePoint is, is really key to how we achieved success in this area. We use Power BI for data visualization. Again, understanding the, the simplicity of the tool at first glance and then just how beautiful this can be. Uh, it really wasn't apparent when we started on this journey, but now it would be my go-to tool. And we use Power Automate to glue it all together. There were lots of opportunities here to automate and inform and communicate. And so we, we really tried to leverage as many of them as possible. And we used just a web form for glass crates. <laughs> it, it, it does come in play. So where do you put the glass? We designed a system called Pass on Glass. So this was the messaging from our social media campaigns, our print media campaigns, to our next door neighbour barbecue chats, having a beer with your mates kind of campaign. It was simple. The message was Pass on Glass. But where do you pass it to? We situated a, a series of large skip bins all across the, the community. You can see them there in, on the map. And we distributed a plastic crate out to anyone that wanted it. And that's where the, the web form came in. We put a web form up on the internet and we started getting people applying for a free crate. This was our first little bit of automation. When we saw the emails coming in from the web form, we thought, hang on, we can do this a little bit better. So using a little bit of Power Automate trickery, we were able to grab those, those form responses and pass them straight into a SharePoint list. We could then start to schedule all in one place our, our distribution and we could send that to our distributors without having to go anywhere. We didn't have to email anyone. It was all set up, different views set up for different people. And we were getting everyone together. So we had a lot of stakeholders involved in this, this effort. It was a real collaborative effort. So we had 
our marketing and communications team. They have their own graphic designers. They have social media gurus. They have all the people that make what we do look and sound amazing. We had our customer service people, the frontline people. So when we put this change in place, remembering this change is a, a gravitational shift. It's tectonic for people that have been putting glass in bins for 20 years. And that's been the message for 20 years. And now we have to say, hang on, we need to do something different. So the customer service people that answer the phone calls and answer the emails, they were going to have to stay right on the ball, right on message, right on target. Our depot and operations people, these are our truck drivers, our curbside advisors, the people out on the street looking and observing bins and behaviours. And then we had the business improvement team. That was us. We were there trying to help out, trying to build or develop or do whatever we could to ensure that this was a nice, smooth transition. So we used teams to collaborate. And I was a little unsure about the word collaborate until I started using teams. And now I am sold. I am an advocate from start to finish. The very first thing I did was to start a chat and invite a whole lot of people. The manager of the customer service team dropped all of his people straight into, into the team. The depot staff would drop them straight into the team. Anyone that didn't have an email address, we organised with IT to get email addresses. So we started with a really simple who, what, when, where, why, how. And we just started. We just started talking. So I started typing in what's happening. What are we talking about? We're talking about recycling. When is it happening? Well, it's coming up, September. It's coming really fast. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we've got this plan, we've got this plan. Here's some pictures that we drew. We were keeping them all in one place so that everyone could see them. It was a single source of truth. We had a, a situation where there was one group of people were wondering whether Tetra packs, so juice packs, were allowed to be recycled. It was great because I was able to at tag the depot manager and get a definitive answer in seconds. We could then take those definitive validated answers, move them into our FAQs. We can work our way through our FAQs and that way the customer service team, when they get a question on the phone, they can go straight to this wiki and they know the answer. When our media people are looking to put together an advertising campaign and they want to know what pictures to put on the posters that are going out in the, in the community, they can do it easily and make sure it's correct and on message every time. So that brings us to the curbside recycling app. Instead of going out with notepads and paper and catching the data and then bringing it back to the depot and having an admin team that will basically enter the data, we thought, can we catch it and enter it into a system of some description and then report on it all automatically. Well, we couldn't do it all, but we could design an app that our recycling advisors could go out with. They could have the right information. They could have an easy way of recording the information and they could send that back without having someone having to type it in. And this was Pretty revolutionary for the little town of Ballarat. As you can probably see, I'm not really a design person. I kind of went, hey, grey will do. Grey looks nice. I also had a bit of a, a stumbling block when it came to the little rubbish bin you can see there. My good friend Xavier Flanagan, he looked over my shoulder and he said, gee, that looks interesting. What colour is that bin? I said, well, it's red. And he said, no, it's not. I'm colour blind, Pete. I went, ah, oh. well, maybe we've got to think differently. So design became part of this. We went back into teams and we did iterative app development. 
We had a conversation around these things. We had conversations around what do you think looks better? What colour? Hang on, we've got graphic designers on hand. So they came to the rescue and made what I built actually look all right. And this was the app they went with. You'll notice if I very quickly flip back a few slides, I had a slider and I thought I was being super, super tricky because I could put a slider in and fill up a bin. It didn't really work all that well though. On the first day that the curbside advisors went out, they came back and it had been raining. And I was sitting there with my laptop, all eager to hear what they thought and see how they went with the app. I said, how did you go? How did the app go? Was it good? And they said, yeah. Which was a little bit disheartening. But I had to forge on, so I said, why? What went wrong? They said, Pete, we love what you did, but the slider doesn't work when our fingers are wet. And I thought, ah. Oh. About 10 minutes later, I was able to change that slider for capacity into radio buttons. And then I could sit there with a glass of water and dip my finger in the water and slide, no, that doesn't work, push buttons, yeah, it does work. So it took 10 minutes to change the app. It took another maybe two minutes to deploy it, have everyone have a look at their phones, click the little light blue bar at the top, and that was done. We did a little bit of testing right there I watched the results come up in the SharePoint list where all this data was being logged. Bob's your uncle. We were able to use the same data source to transform the app so it was simpler for doing more rapid appraisals. These were done in a truck. So the truck driver sits on one side of the truck, the curbside recycling advisor sits on the other side of the truck. They have a little camera looking back into the into the truck and so they were able to very very quickly ascertain whether there was glass bag material soft plastics or rubbish our four top big hitters and they can just push one button it takes about 13 seconds in between pickups so they had to work fast and then the hidden gems that came along we were able to produce some really really good data so Power BI really came to shine when we were able to, in a matter of hours, build a dashboard that could show our management exactly how we were performing, what the trends were looking like, and whether we were going to be successful. Another hidden little gem was our ability to check and calibrate our assessors. We could see whether people were assessing at a more stringent level so we could then calibrate their assessments. In the background, I embedded geotagging so that we could see across the city where we'd been and how we were faring, whether there were any hotspots in any certain areas. We were also able to use this data to configure our truck routing so that we were never left behind we really didn't want a truck to go ahead of our people, pick up the bin, put it down and have them come around and have nothing to assess. So this was invaluable. And we were also able to get a detailed breakdown of what was contaminating our recycling stream. So not just the glass, but we were also able to see things like bag recycling, we were able to see plastic bags, we were able to see soft plastics, and we also had other. This was also important because in the app, if you tick other, it exposes a text input box. So you can put some free text in there. We were then able to analyse that free text and come out with some other drivers that weren't already known. We can then pull those other drivers and put them in as options in the app. And just a little more, this was the code that I was using. It's very, very simple. So for the streets, we had a SharePoint list of all of our streets and suburbs. 
I was able to filter based on the suburb. So Addington there is the suburb and Edmonton Road would be the road. And it would limit the, the selection of streets just to the suburb. You can see there that there is nothing available below the street number. And that was so someone would have to put a number in there. Once they did, the display mode would change from disabled to edit, and then they could tick their contaminants, their capacity, etc., etc. Another little one that I, I loved using was the on start, so setting variables to get the Office 365 user's profile information so I could use it wherever I wanted. And this was an exercise in simplicity. How do you get the information that you want into your database in the simplest possible form? And I think we went pretty close. We, if we had a red or green button, maybe, but this worked really well. We were able to use a simple patch and all it would send across to the SharePoint list was the what sort of contaminant it was, so glass, bag material, soft plastics or rubbish, the date, so the date stamp as it stood, the latitude and longitude. All I did was turn the visibility of the geotagging off. And the result, so we did more than 40,000 observations over two months. We had 14,000 instances of contamination. We only observed 504 instances of glass in bins. That results in less than 2%. This was successful beyond our wildest dreams. We could not ask for a better result. And this will now inform the way we move on to the other contaminants. We can use Teams again. We can bring this team back instantly. And we can start our project on, say, bag recycling or soft plastics. We can use the power of collaboration and the power of the platform to start to really, really drive community benefit and realise real benefits. I'd like to thank you so much for listening to me. This has, it's been a real, real pleasure to uh, present in this format. I'd love to thank Collab365 for GlobalCon 1. This is such an awesome event. You can find me anytime on LinkedIn. So there I am, Pete Donoghue. Uh, feel free to connect with me, chat with me, find me. Uh, I currently work for the city of Ballarat, so you can probably find me there as well if you ever make it to Ballarat. Um, in the meantime, thank you very much for attending. Uh, make sure you jump in and purchase an all-access pass, and hopefully we'll see you soon.